Good day. Welcome to Yoga with Bliss. We warm up so you get the best benefit from the yoga. We have a nice practice where oftentimes we move more slowly than other practices. That allows you to tune into what's happening with you. What do you need to accommodate? Is there a back issue, an ankle issue, a shoulder issue? You've got time to take care of yourself in this practice. And so with this little beat, we'll center up with the mountain. Now think about it. Do you put your feet right together? Do you leave your feet a little apart or maybe even wider? Double shoulder roll, pelvic tilt. Feel the weight on the ball of the foot, baby toe joint, heel and toe. Take a peek at my hands. See how when I do my shoulder roll, my hands end up forward. You don't want to be here. You don't want to have your hands this way. They're right here and in line with the side stripe on your body. No, that's on my body. Very nice. You look great. Let's do shoulder rolls. Now, on the shoulder roll, I think about it from the top down. I feel my shoulders and neck. I feel my ribs, hips, careful on your knees, feel your feet, they massage right down into the ground. Shoulder rolls the other way, whatever way you were doing them back or forward, switch to the other way. There we are. And then we're just going to come right up to a salute stand so tall. Are your arms right here? Are they out? Suit yourself. Breathe. Come on out, let's smile. Keep that big tall body that you pulled up into when you did your salute. Here we are. Now, this music gives you enough time to give a big reach out if you want, or real careful reach if that's what your body requires. Think of your shoulders, let's go up top. Do you want little windshield wipers? But then intend for your elbows to lift as high as they can. Breathing here. And now come underneath, right here we go. This move actually warms up everything. When I go to another instructor's class, I just go in the back and I do this move, yes. For a while, and here. And we're going to land with goddess legs. So just feel pelvic tilt, sternum lift. Very nice. Let your arms come out and we're going to let them round. Come up. Side view. Round. Come up. Now when you come up, you may arch a little. Or maybe with your back special needs, you just pull tall no arch. Which is right for you. So we've been doing this almost up tall. Let's take it down a little lower. Come on up, a little lower. Up tall, round that chest. Now open it up. When you open, stretch the chest wall here. Alrighty, got your legs bent. Want to bend them a little more. <clears throat> Same movement, two times. Here we go. It's two times and up again. So I'm taking the two to get down and up, press back, no bounce, two, down, and here. This adds a little extra glute work, a little extra front of the thigh, warming up. Don't go down as low as I do. You round down and open up where it's right for you. Maybe you're right, ooh, right there. Beautiful. Come on up with your shoulder rolls. Smooth and mellow. Oh, yes. As you lift your sternum, feel your abdominal wall engage. That's nice. Stand up tall and center. Touch your heel, your heel. Now, yes, when it's this slow, it's a balance move. Right here you are. You may want to go wide. 
you may like. Just stay right close together with your feet. You choose it right there. And I'm going to switch to a point. I point my toe and squeeze my inner thigh. Here, walk my arms on up. Yes. Lift to your tallest, your shoulders will allow. Come on down, right here. Feel your abs engage as your arms are out front. Come on up. Lift that sternum that also keeps your core engaged. Down one last time right here. Very nice. And here's just a little knee lift. Now, I started out with my knee lift so low, my toes grazed the floor. Do you want your knee lift way up high? I don't know what's right for you. Oh yes, Joanne, I like that reach across and squeeze toward, elbow toward the knee if you want, make it yours. Here we are. Maybe you leave your arms down here. See what your body says. And when you're ready, open it up. Give it a little turn and round those shoulders open tall. Unlocked knees and let yourself come up and come up. When you come up, pelvic tilt so your back does not arch. Breathing. <clears throat> And when you come one last way tall, prepare for the other side. Pelvic tilt, coming down. And this open up stretches your chest, but we're not arching the back. This is meant to warm the legs, lubricate the spine. So if your back is tender, here, try this way where you're just Oh, yes, like a little back massage. Oh, I can't resist giving you some market research. And when you come up tall, let's have our shoulder rolls. <clears throat> if you ever have your back issues, and if it's okay with your medical team, they say this is a good thing, those little, like, Thermacare type uh, heating pads on your back are fabulous. Here's your goddess with a dip and dip. You got your pelvic tilt, sternum lift, chin tuck, dip and dip. So here was my market research. <coughs> Excuse the frog in my throat. How are your thighs while I tell this story? Take your arms down, elbows up, arms down, look kind of jazz arms. Other way. I took dollar store version of Thermacare I use neck wraps on my low back. They're a better size and cheaper. Arms down. I did the dollar store version. I did the CVS version. One last time up. And I did actual Thermacare. Would your thighs like to come up and do a little tracing of a smile? Smile. And here's the result. Dollar store lasts four hours. Interestingly enough, Thermacare lasts six hours. Okay, CVS, neck wraps used at the small of your back, stays piping hot for eight hours over the top. Come in here. So any place you want to use a heat wrap, try CVS brand. I am not being paid for this endorsement because they last better than the Thermacare. Oh, center it up, round like a little weeping willow tree in a breeze. Now think of your knees. <clears throat> Kathy, you might be seeing this on YouTube. Don't let that knee collapse in. Keep your knees out like you were riding on a little horsey. There you go. Oh, thank you to your back. You're doing this as much rotation as your back wants, or maybe you're just doing such a careful thing, you're not even letting the momentum of your arms be there. Shoulder roll yourself up. I don't know about you, but I have a nice little glow about me. I left my hair down, so I'm hot. Warm, hot is a good way to be before we stretch ourselves out. Salute, are your arms right here next to your ears? Are they out? Take a moment 
Choose your foot location. Weight on that whole foot in, out, front, back. Beautiful. Unlock your knees and choose your first forward fold. Should you come down, oh, right there to an ottoman. Should you come down, my feet go a little wider to leave room for my belly. Should you go down a little lower to a block, maybe to the small side of the block, relax your neck, let your head hang down, your forward fold. First one of the day is not your deepest forward fold. It's just lovely. We're going to breathe into this. I'll show a side view. Unlock knees on the ottoman or the block or fingertips or palms your body your way exhaling down with each breath you lower oh. now i'm going to turn one foot out doesn't matter if your feet are right together turn one foot out and let your body lean over that side very nice breathing your feet could be together or apart but your hands are on either side toward the foot again you may be using blocks you may be have just supported on your ottoman with one hand and on your thigh with the other Come back to center, wherever your forward fold is good, breathe into it. That little wiggle, that's proprioceptive stretching. I perceive my muscles through movement. Turn the other foot out. My feet are a little wider, yours might be together. And let these hands be on your ottoman or your block or your fingertips or your palms on the other side. It's a supported forward fold, not dangling. Give yourself the best depth that you want, being extra cautious. Come back to your center. Your foot comes back to parallel. And now you may find you exhale down just a smidgen further. Relax the neck. Hug your elbows. And go one side to the other, relaxing the neck. It doesn't matter if you're so low, your elbows are scraping the ground, or if perhaps you feel best where your elbows are knee height or thigh height. Your forward fold your way. See how one arm is under? Put the other under. Exhale down to your best forward. I'm going to call this one a forward hang. Breathing. Exhaling. Stop here in your middle and feel now you exhale into a deeper forward fold because we've been here a while. Ah. Ah. How are you going to arise? Will you sit your butt down and come up with a flat back? Amy, I recommend this for you. Think about it. When you sit down and do your flat back, you are pampering the low back a little more. And that might be a good thing. How about your shoulder rolls? Oh, doesn't the back of you feel all loosened up? So nice. Take a moment and think of the front of you. This first is so simple. We're thinking of the psoas. It connects from the base of your spine and back down to the front of your thigh. You stand in your mountain. The most important part of all asanas, which means seat, is your pelvic girdle, which is your seat. Pelvic tilt is the most important part. Sternum lift, chin tuck just gets your spine up in its natural curve. Now, it's funny, just now when I looked at my image, because of my round belly, it looks like I'm leaning back. I want you to pay attention to my spine. That's what's all nice up and tall. You pay attention to your spine too. You're not leaning. 
you're tall. And here's the move, it's just too simple. Put your weight all on one foot and touch your toe behind you, reiterating your pelvic tilt. And the psoas gets a stretch while you do some balance work. I'll show you from this angle. Mountain, keep my pelvic tilt, touch back, reiterate my pelvic tilt, feel the psoas stretch. Keep that psoas stretch, keep that flat back. Lift the body, now you have added. I know we're working, this is not a passive stretch. We're balancing, we're releasing the front of the body. Oh, I love this. If your back is tender, you may leave your arms down and think about lifting and opening your body without adding the weight of the arms. If it feels good to add the weight of the arms, your body, your choice. Come on in, shoulder roll, just to wiggle it a little bit. Mountain, pelvic tilt, oh yeah. Shoulders, sternum, chin. Pour the weight onto the other foot. Balance is greatly related to strength and pain levels. The more you balance, the stronger you get. The more you cope with your pain, just right, got your pelvic tilt. Your butt cheek should be tight like a little biscuit. And you're opening up here. Yes, choose your arms. Do you want them to come up? Are you pampering your low back and it feels better? For your arms to stay down. In either case, you're opening up this rectus abdominis, connects to the sternum and the pubic bone. Open it, open it without arching your back. An amazing thing you're lifting. Come on down for your shoulder rolls. I, I have to do uh, just a little move from belly dance, of course. Our shoulder rolls turn into hip circles. That's a belly dance move. And on your hip circle, you imagine your hip going around in a circle like a wagon wheel, right? I want to do our hip circle in a different direction. Take that wagon wheel and lay it down sideways. Unlock your knees, think of your hips, and just feel them go around carefully, carefully. If you're, yes, I can see many people, it looks excellent. Oh, here's another low back pampering. You may want to hold on so it just gives you extra control. Let's go the other way. Extra control to pamper your back for how much of your wagon wheel laying horizontal hip circle you do. Center it up. <coughs> how about a little chair? Now, do you put your feet right together for a chair? Do you put a block between your feet and leave your feet block distance? Feel what's right for you. It's a matter of your hips, how much uh, softness on the inner thigh, your knees, your ankles. So we have a salute. Your arms as near vertical as your arms will go. This arm over here, it doesn't go very vertical. So I'm intending for them to catch up. Pelvic tilt. Your low back is not arching. Beautiful lifted ribs. And now for the chair, do you want to leave your arms up and sit yourself down? Here's another option to pamper your low back. Reiterate your flat back with your arms down and find your chair. So are your arms up in the middle or down? There's your chair. Think about your chair. If you need to adjust your feet, I do. Sit your chair down as low as your chair goes. Choose the arms that are right for your chair. Now, again, to pamper the low back, keep your arms back, you're lifting up your chest. And if you have a large chest, you're lifting a lot of weight, your chair might look like this. It may not be bent very much at all to pamper your low back. Have you adjusted your chair just right? Forward fold, let yourself breathe. Exhale to your best forward fold. Choose how you shall arise. Flat back or roll up a vertebrae at a time. I'll show a vertebrae at a time this time. Pelvic tilt, roll it up. When you get here, shoulder roll to mountain and we arise to pelvic tilt, pelvic tilt to a back 
bend. I arrange my feet differently for my back bend so my hips feel good. My butt cheeks are engaged so my low back has no big arch. If you have back issues today, instead of a back bend, you may do just a rise and lift, or you may do a bend your way. Each person considers, should you be looking toward your arm or toward the wall, or does it feel better to rest your head on the softness of the upper back? We're all built differently. Many people have no softness on the upper back. Appreciate what your body gives you. Come slowly, 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 and we're heading to a chair. Do you want to leave your arms up? Do you want to reiterate your flat back and start your chair that way? And then select your arms, your body, your way. Oh yes, this is a challenge to the low back. My low back is talking to me today. Breathe. What's happening with your neck? You don't want to crane your neck up. Nice and neutral neck. <sighs> Into your best chair. <sighs> Into your best forward fold. Hang there for a few breaths. With each breath, find your best, lowest. Unlock these. Hanging. Relax the neck. Forward fold. How shall you arise? Conscious choice. Come up your way and we come to a salute. The salute is going to come to your back bend, your way. Breathing, breathing. Neutral neck, comfortable neck. Wherever you are, intend a smidgen further, or if you're not bending, intend a smidgen taller. When you're ready, we come ever so slowly to the forward fold. I need to go slowly so that I don't get dizzy. I have very low blood pressure, and so I have to pamper my uh, up and downs breathing. So my blood pressure can equalize. How about coming to your chair? Lift the chest, feel your flat back, sit your butt down, choose your arms. Your chair, your way. After that, we're gonna just be with it. Make it your best chair of the day. And after this chair, we shall just arise to a mountain. <sighs> Breathe and be lovely. So I just want to do a standing cat cow. So I give myself, I'm really thinking of my low back today. We've lifted it, we've stretched it. I've just given myself a nice mountain pelvic tilt. The standing cat around your back. Standing cow, like your udders just fell forward, your back may arch. If you've got back issues, instead of arching, you just come up tall, tall, tall. Here's your cat. Inhale to your cow. I just widened my legs because I wanted the challenge to my thighs. Here we go. Oh, look, I conjured up a cat. <laughs> Here's your cow. I wonder, did she know her name? Here's your cat. I'm falling over with my cat. <laughs> and here's your cow. I closed my eyes because I was grooving on it, feeling so good. Center it up. Center it up. While we're here, let's do side. That was front and back spine bend. Here we are, side. Now, what if your spine is tender today? Shorten your arms and make them little bitty T-Rex arms. And just give yourself a little lean. And then you decide whether you like your little bitty arms or whether you like medium arms with a little bend in the elbow. Do you like yourself down lower? You can really customize this. It can be quite gentle or it can be lovely body weight training yoga. On your exhale, give yourself your best to bend. Very nice. Go as slow as your body wants. When you come up, here's our goddess. We're going to come up to a star, but don't lock your legs. Unlock the star. 
bend down goddess now i've got my hands facing each other like the energy was flowing do you like your hands forward star choose it see what's happening think of your elbows are your elbows traveling forward press them back press them back star those elbows pressed back opens up the lactic outlet opens up the shoulder joint star and one last here we are here we are take this to your lowest goddess your lowest goddess and let your arms relax stay low you take yourself with a first time just doing weeping willow arms but now i want i don't have any momentum going because i'm pampering my tender back if your legs are not tired come on down lower if your legs are fatigued come on up a little bit see what your body wants i'm going to do two pulses no bounce here and stretch two pulses each side place and stretch this gives you more care more proprioceptive movement perceive it as you move and make a choice very nice now i've got my legs bent i should have said have your blocks handy you might want to go get your blocks and we'll meet back here in our goddess and i'm about to do a move i don't do very well but that doesn't matter you may do them more than i do or less than i do everybody's a good body whenever you've got back you have your blocks we have our goddess we're going to come out with airplane arms leave your legs quite to bend flat back swan dive that's what it is not airplane swan dive now your swan dive might end right here and you may you may stop in an ottoman or the back of a low chair you may stop i have i'll show you i have in my swan dive a flat back so i'm stopping wherever i need to stop i have not rounded my back it is flat did you find your beautiful flat back bent legs wherever you need to be remember it'll be fine up higher or lower here's the cat cow again with wide bent legs round up for your cat on a fence here's your cow let your udders hang down your back may arch here's your cat here's your cow wherever i am when i wonder what breathing i should do i think about when does my chest round in and have less room that's when i exhale open up and expand that's when i inhale so i exhale on my cat and i inhale on my cow each of us at our own pace at our own depth making your cat cow feel good your knees may bend a little more on the cow oh what a lovely back massage so now i'm going to do a balance move with your blocks high or the back or seat of a couch here we are in a flat back mode so you choose how high do you need to be to have a nice flat back i'm bringing my feet in closer under me and i'm letting one toe touch out so you may have your hands on the ground you may have your hands on the chair i'm going halfway between flat back one leg is out my arms are going a little bit wider for balance. Go ahead, lift that leg. This is a standing dragon's tail. If your leg comes over and out, oh, is that too much for your back? Let your dragon's tail drag on the ground if you want. A standing dragon's tail gives you the back work and side to side stretch at the same time as pamper your knees because we don't have weight on them but strengthening your knees because we have weight on the whole leg come back to center find your cat cow do you want to come up higher or lower now adjust to your own personal body and on your cat exhale inhale on your cow and then find yourself back to flat back choose your wider 
arm supports, whether they're on the chair, the block, the floor. This leg goes in the middle, the leg you're standing on now. It's the leg you did not stand on first. Adjust your foot, adjust so your knee is comfortable. Breathing with the toe down, you may have a dragon's tail. You'll feel right here, your spine bends a little one way and the other. You may like your dragon's tail in the air. It's beautiful balance work in all cases. If it's uncomfortable for you to stand on the leg, let your dragon's tail be low and small and really just think about, I don't need to be tactless, but wiggle your butt instead of your whole leg. And there's less uh, work for that leg to do if it is a challenged leg. And whenever you're ready, find yourself back forward, breathe, we're heading to a chair. Find your flat back and arise. To a salute, to a salute. Oh, come on down. You got a towel somewhere? You might need it. I need my shoulder rolls again. I'm gonna use a little sun salutation A, because didn't we already do enough chairs? Sun salutation A, I'm just gonna do two. That gives me time if I if you want to lift your leg during the three-legged dog you can do one on each side but I tell you this that we're gonna do two customized Sun salutation A's so you get you what do you need for your down dog and for your plank some days you need to be higher some days lower on the mat on an ottoman against the wall. Choose it in your mind's eye. Think of what you need. In reality, give yourself what you need. Boy, isn't that a life lesson. Here's your mountain. Now when I shake my head, it's me, quite frankly, loosening my neck, letting some air get under all this hair. But it's a, it's a message to you to relax your neck too. Feel that mountain center into it, pelvic tilt, sternum lift. <coughs> Breathe and be. <sighs> sternum lift, pelvic tilt, chin tucked. Let's go to your salute, your way, choose your arms for your body. Forward fold your way to your height. Choose what's right for you. We arise with a flat back to whatever height is right for you. We come on down to your forward fold, your way. Arise, flat back, and down. One last, flat back. And this time after your forward fold, what did you choose? for your down dog. Are you on an ottoman, on blocks, on the mat? You may be doing a short dog. Diane, when your wrists are tender, do a short dog. It's, it's, this is a forward fold. You don't really have any weight on your hands. A short dog means you've got weight on your hands, but not too much. You love a great, long, long dog. And, Sink your chest. I don't know, but your body knows. Listen. Breathe into it. Several breaths. Being with it. Choose the distance between your hands and feet. How about your plank? Are you heading into a plank on a mat? Are you heading into a plank on a different surface? Your plank, your way, your body, your needs. Let's talk about your arms a moment. Eye of the elbow forward, neck neutral, breathing, plank. Choose your down dog, whatever down dog is right for you. Your arm width, your leg to arm distance. Sink your chest, lengthen your spine. 
very nice. Here comes, we are moving into forward fold. I'm going to use a three-legged dog. Then I'll be coming forward into a pyramid for a moment. And after my pyramid with bent legs or longer legs, I will come to my forward fold. You move from your down dog any way you want into your forward fold. Relax that neck. Here we have flat back. Give one good exhale. Oh, and a beautiful inhale. Into your flat back. Exhale. One last. How shall you arise? Flat back or round up a vertebrae at a time. Conscious choice. When you come up, Find your salute. Breathing, being. Now when you come down to your mountain, take a moment. Remember, what leg did you lift up in the air? You're going to lift up the other leg if you happen to have done the three-legged dog. Here we are in our mountain, our final customized sun salutation A, we salute. Your best salute. Forward fold. <sighs> Halfway flat back, forward fold, flat back around, last forward fold. And now find your down dog your way. What's the distance for your hands? What's the distance to your feet? Are your feet together or are your feet apart? I don't know, but your body knows. Sink your chest, lengthen your spine, eye of the elbow forward. The leg you did not yet lift will shall be lifted if you choose the three-legged dog. We are heading to a forward fold any way you want. I take a moment in my pyramid and then I find my fold. You go from your down dog to your fold any way you want. Breathing. We have three flat back arise with our breath. Exhale down into your lovely forward fold. Flat back, inhale. Exhale down. One more. How shall you arise if you're pampering your back? Sit your butt. Find your flat back and push. Or did you come up one vertebrae at a time? Your best salute and a few shoulder rolls. Now you have Yogi's choice. How are you going to get down? Any way you want, you can use the chair. I'm gonna get down by doing a dog, a table, and a sit. What do you want? Your body, your way. <sighs> I was out gardening with a helper, and I kept doing this dog to table, to gardening, and I would get up the reverse. I would go to table, to dog, and stand up. And while you're here, let's have a few cat cows breathing. And the middle-aged woman who was helping me, and I'm 25 years older than her, said, oh, I can't get up and down. I said, oh, let me show you this method. And don't you know, within a few minutes, she was getting up and down off the ground. Take your time and sit yourself down. We never know what our bodies can do until we try, but we must try slowly, gently, and not push past our abilities. So I had a hankering for a side angle today, but I decided to do a seated side angle. Everybody has a different flexibility in their hips. For some reason today, 
My muscles are wanting to cramp when I sit in my full V sit. Who knows, but I will listen and accommodate. See those little flexed feet? That's because I want to have either flexed feet or pointed feet, just not limp, loosey-goosey feet. Here's why. And we must uh, give credit to Dragon Spirit Arts. Flexion is protection. When I flex my feet, muscles all up my leg, protect my knees better, protect my ankles better. Even if I point, that flexion protects the joints in my legs. Now just round yourself. Oh yes, did you wanna weasel right up to a wall? I'm gonna show you why. When you're in your V-sit, if you're a normal person, I mean the majority of people, their pelvic girdle tips back so their rounded spines. And this move is supposed to have an up tall spine. So if you walk yourself up to a wall, let your dimples be on the wall, and then your shoulder blades be on the wall and the back of your head is on the wall. See how all up on that wall, look what happened. My pelvic girdle tipped forward. That's what you want in your V-sit or your easy seat. As a matter of fact, I'm here we are, we are in our V-seat. Did you get up against the wall? If you don't need the wall, use the muscle strength of uh, floating in the room. It's up to you. So here we were in our V. Before we continue, let's stay all up tall and have a little butterfly. Just a different hip stretch. And I will confess it was my cramps that made me want some different hip stretch. I thought the body is informing us. Choices. I find I actually grasp my shins, not up here in your knee where all your, uh, those nerves that they do for reflexes are, just right here on the little meaty muscle of your shin and pull yourself up tall, whether you're free floating around the wall. Did you pull yourself as tall as your body goes? Now keep that flat back. Even if you go nowhere, intend to lean a little forward. So you may be glued to the wall on your exhale, intend to have less press on the wall. Some people with a flat back will go whoop, right down. But if you don't happen to be a trained ballerina or gymnast and you're an average person, just intend as forward as your flat back body will go and be with it. Oh yeah. And now round yourself over. Round over, round over, round over. So some people who were up against the wall, when they came forward, they didn't go anywhere. When they round over, their uh, shoulder blades, like if you're a female, would wear a bra where your bra strap is, would be on the wall. And your upper body might have rounded a little. So there you are. When you're rounded state, pull yourself down for you. If you happen to be proportioned where your elbows can press down on your legs, fine. Choose closer lay feet or farther away feet. Your butterfly your way, round it over. Come on up. Sit in tall for you. Pull on up tall for you. And let's take our tall selves up against the wall or not into our V. And now we had, oh yes, that cramping feeling is gone. Side angle. Look, I've got a, a block on either side. Some people will like to have a block to lean on when they do a seated side angle. Here's the key. Feel your sits bones into your mat. That is, you are rooted into your sits bones. One of them's not going to pop up. Take your arms. Drop one shoulder. Let the other shoulder lift. This hand might want to hold on. It might want to come to the front of the thigh because here's the most important part. This show, oh, second most. Sits bones are most important. Shoulder is second most. Keep that shoulder back. Now, my shoulder's too tender today to lift any more than this when I come out this way. 
So I'm going to snuggle my shoulder in. Oh, and Doriva, sometimes just doing it this way, even though you don't have a limitation, gives you a better stretch. So each person, their way, shoulder back, and find your side angle. Oh, yes, I am going slow enough so that if you have limitations or pain, you can pain surf, you can be careful with your limitations. Now I see for most of you, your arm came right over next to your ear and you have a straight line from your hip bone to your pinky finger that's up there, that's fine. And mine's fine too. Now let's take this arm, let your shoulder roll forward, let your shoulder roll forward and center us up for the other side. Feel your sits bones. Your pelvic girdle is tipped. You've rooted yourself up on the wall if you need to. This hand, do you like to hold on to a block? Do you use this hand pushing on your inner thigh to keep this shoulder back? I'm gonna try the bigger rise on this side. On this side, my arm will go up as I drop this shoulder down and lean. But I want to see how would it feel if I just came up through the middle. So you can do one, do the other. Let's think about this arm while it's up here. If it's up here and it angles forward, you're missing it. The shoulder is back and the hand is back. If I was up against the wall, I'd want my fingertips to be grazing the wall the whole time. It's such a shoulder release. Now with care, let your shoulder come forward and now drop that arm. It's a way to come out of the side angle. We'll do once more on each side. Take a moment, center up. Feel your spine. Did you want to do a smaller arm movement, the bigger arm movement, conscious yogi's choice? Lean it. Open the shoulder. Choose it. Oh, look, on this side, I could lift it up. Oh, the second time. That's why I like to do things twice. Keep this arm wants to come forward on me. Oh no, press it open, pull that arm, intend it in line. <sighs> Exhale, head to your stretch. When you come up, <sighs> here we are for the other side. On our second one, I arise with a little more active lift in a different way. You're over, do you like to hold on? Press on, hold here, shoulders open, fingertips on the wall if the wall is there for you. Open and with each exhale, feel your stretching from your hip bone up your side, in your shoulder, through your arm. When you come out, do you want to roll it down like we did before or come up and out like we did on our second time? Oh, that was fabulous. We have a little core work coming on. I know we did a few dog planks. They're wonderful core work. I'm walking away from the wall, a little butt walk there. Choices. I'm heading to the boat. Do you put your knees right together for a boat? Do you have some softness in the middle or is it just more comfortable for your legs to be a little apart or more? Your boat, your way. But I want to show you what one of the most important parts of the boat is this rounded back. So really round over like in your butterfly when you're rounded over and you'll find when you go back that rounded spine leaves your neck in a nice comfortable neutral position. I'm going to just hang here, come up a half an inch and go back a half an inch. Did you ever wonder where your psoas was? Your psoas hip flexor is contracting and your rectus abdominis is holding that curled upper body. Keep the curled upper body the whole time. Joanne, I'm not sure. I can't tell from your angle. You want to stay rounded. I know I'm never telling you to round your back. Stay rounded. Don't let yourself come back and open up. Stay rounded. The rectus abdominis is actually working to keep you rounded. Oh, come on up to our butterfly. How are your hip flexors? Mine said, thank you, Kelly. I, I wouldn't mind a release. So let's have a little butterfly release. 
If you get hold of your toes, don't ever pull them up. Grasp your ankles if you want to pull. But I'll be honest with you, my toes were cold. There's a fan right here, so I'm just warming them up. Relaxing. So I'll tell you what I've started to do. I'm preparing to go back to teaching three classes a week in January. So I've started uh, doing yoga with other instructors. And I will tell you how you can make other classes friendly. So here you are in your boat and you're rounded. Keep your pause button handy and see what the move is and then hit pause and do it yourself slowly so that you can do a lot of proprioception. So here I am, I've got my arms back, my feet are just lightly touching. Do I wanna pick up one foot? Do I want to pick up both, point them, or flex them? Your boat, your way. Do I want to get my knees bent? Keep rounded and hug on. This gives me tons of control. I can use my arms some or not at all. Your boat, your way, your body. When you're ready, set your oars down in the water. Stay here and let's do a few half an inch back and forward and now we're going to go back and stay back one arm reaches way way far the other arm reaches way way far your shoulder comes forward the other shoulder so your oars are in the water so you don't oh that looks beautiful guys you know i'm seeing your t-shirts wrinkle in just the right way that tells me your obliques and your transverse muscles in your core are involved. Now let's do it with a two pulse. We place and push further. Place and push. Place and push. How are your psoas? If they're too fatigued, come up into a butterfly sooner. If your hip flexors feel okay and your rectus abdominis and side of your core feels okay, we'll do four more. And push and Here's our last one right there. Come center, come up, round over into your butterfly your way. Breathe and relax. I'm going to begin our final stretch with a psoas stretch right now. Because heaven help us if I forgot the psoas stretch after we just worked it so magnificently. For the psoas stretch, you lay on your side and you may want a block under your head. Suzanne, you do have a little smaller block. Just depending on the way your body's put together, the four inch block, which is what I use, may be fine, but maybe you like the three inch block. This arm is just relaxed. You should not feel a lot of pressure on this shoulder. The head is lifted enough so the shoulder's comfortable. Imagine my spine inside my body. Can't you see the straight line happening? Breathing. So I'm going to curl my knees up. I wish the same for you. And then I take my leg down long. It's not forward. It's not back yet. It's just down long. But that bottom leg curled out of the way so the top leg can come on down. Up here is your iliac crest. Up underneath it is your iliacus. And your iliacus is singing the hallelujah chorus. Oh, or maybe it's doing the Carol Burnett Tarzan yell. That's what mine does. The iliacus needs stretching. If you ever find another way to stretch it, tell me this is all I have ever found. I ask every yoga teacher I work with, what do you do to stretch your iliacus? This is it, but it's so good. Now, Diane, I know you want to bend your leg, but I invite you to leave your leg long and unlocked and slide it back. And as you slide your arm out, do you like to hold your arm? or rest it on something and let your leg be as far back as it'll go 
long but unlocked. That's the psoas. Let's be here and breathe with it. Oh, I've linked my fingers and pulled my arm. That actually stretched my psoas more. Just breathe with it. Now, go ahead and bend that knee. Don't follow me. My knee on this side won't, won't bend in this position. But you bend the knee, drop that knee down. Don't let it come up in the air like this. It's bent, it's dropped, and it's back. Oh, I did find a way I could do it a little bit. And that's another thing. If you've got something your body won't do, say thank you, body, for the information. Don't get mad at yourself. And then wiggle around and feel into it. My goal here is to stretch the quadricep and the psoas breathing any way you can wiggle around and i will say my knee didn't like both of them being stretched so i'm actually doing more of a quad stretch than and i've let go of the psoas for a moment but if you can keep oh yeah the hip coming forward is what gives that psoas stretch the bent leg is what gives the quad stretch do them both if you can be with it breathe with it knee down now when you come out of this just pull yourself together back into the neutral or the the fetal position neutral pose and we're going to just roll over onto your back any way you want you don't have to be cute and we're going to do the other side after you feel your back roll yourself all the way over I know you're not looking at the screen anymore. That's okay. You know what we just did. First, you laid in your fetal position or neutral position, bottom arm out long. You double checked that your spine was comfortable. Curl both knees up out of the way. Oh, Amy, doesn't that feel good on your low back? You could just hit pause when you're watching this on the video if you want to just hang here in the low back stretch for a while. Now we take the top leg long, not forward, not back, straight down. And breathe in. Let the side of your foot come down toward the ground. Now, most of the, I think everybody in class today, your foot goes right to the ground. But for those watching on YouTube, you might be like me. My foot stops right here, and I have to really breathe into it. Breathe and relax, and it might go a little lower. It may eventually touch the ground. Whenever you get there, breathe into your lowest foot, and your iliacus is being stretched. Now, the iliacus does not have a whole bunch of nerve endings. So you won't feel it stretch the way you feel other muscles stretch. But it is so important to have a nice toned and flexible iliacus. It helps with your pelvic girdle positioning. You know the seat of all movement and existence as a human being. Now keep your leg long, unlocked, but long. Slide it back slide back I pull this arm forward at the same time and I have a stretch from the outside of my arm and my shoulder my rhomboids inside of my ribs oh yes that iliacus is still involved and the psoas when the leg is long just unlocked the psoas is getting a really intense release and stretch whenever is the right time for you you can keep your knee back and bend that back leg while we just lay here stretching as we age oftentimes our muscles shorten so we need to spend more time stretching I used to have very flexible quadriceps, and somewhere in my 60s, they shortened. I don't even know when it happened. That's all right. I say thank you to my body for the information. And then 
when I do yoga, I'll hit pause and hang here on this quadricep stretch for a good long time. Listen to your body. Where do you have tighter muscles that need stretching? Where do you have weaker muscles that need strengthening? So stay here as long as you want. Whenever you feel even, Stephen, whenever you're ready, we'll pull ourselves together back to the fetal position. Remove your block. I am leaving a block on each side in case I need them and we'll roll back onto the back. So my body recently educated me in another way that absolutely shocked me. Are you on your back? So here's what I do. I lift my body a little, do a pelvic tilt, and roll my spine down one vertebrae at a time. How about a little rock and roll? Do you want to grasp under your leg and curl up and roll side to side? Do you want to leave your feet on the floor and roll side to side? Do you want to get a yoga strap and tuck it carefully on your shins and roll side to side? So you might be doing windshield wipers, holding on with your hands, holding on with a strap. Did you give your body your roll side to side the right way for you? Now, stop here in the middle, and with great care, give yourself a little rock. Now, I'm actually pulling with my arms. When I have my feet on the ground, I push with my feet. I'm not working my core to make this happen. The goal is, as Suzanne says, a massage from the inside out, a little back massage. And if you came to practice today with a tender back, do everything for the back carefully, but this may be very helpful. Again, feet might be better on the ground if your back wants it. What about a happy baby? We're all different. I'm gonna go ahead and set my strap down. One way to do a happy baby is to just hug your knees if you can and shine the bottom of your feet to the ceiling. That's good enough. What if your feet were on the ground? Your happy baby, okay, my chair's not, not close enough, might be to put your feet on a chair and just feel your body stretch in whatever way you can with your feet on the chair. So has everybody chosen the happy baby that works for them. Don't compare yourself with anyone else. Your feet might be on a chair, your hands might be on your legs, your calves. I'm rocking a little side to side because that feels great. Some days I rock all the way over and let my knee touch the ground. That might be terrible for you. Breathing. For me, with my spinal stenosis and spine arthritis, it gives a massage in some way that nothing else does. And it's so fabulous, wonderful. And nod to Joyce, who will be back with us in January. Did you want to straighten your legs out? Maybe you're holding on right here and you went from bent legs to less bent legs for an ecstatic baby and take it for a little rock. Breathing. Now give it a bend and come down smoothly, slowly. Everybody enjoy the windshield wiper. Everybody enjoy the foot press rock and roll. <sighs> All right, Javasana is next. What is your choice? Do you want to roll over and do a prone Javasana with whatever is the right padding for your head and torso? Do you want to stay right here? I do that pelvic tilt first. Do you put a big pillow, a big bolster under your knees? 
your javasana your way. All right, I'm going to walk myself down because I want my heels at the edge of my mat. There it is. When my heels are at the edge of my mat, look right at my feet. I flex my foot and I'm right at the edge of my mat and then I relax. It actually pulls my heel down a little. When we get back to regular class in 2023, practicing in the studio, I'm going to come around and pull your heels while you breathe. Imagine that you are having that wonderful feeling of the heel pull and breathe. Did you know your body responds when you imagine it? Did you like your palms down? Do you want your palms up? Do whatever you want, but now wiggle. I'm, I'm wiggling my hands and relax some, my face relax. I'm even wiggling my core and relax. And finally I wiggle my feet and relax. Everything is so relaxed I can hardly talk. I wish the same for you. Feel your breath. You may find that after yoga practice, you have a little more belly breathing just naturally, where your diaphragm is involved in the breathing. In your daily life, when you sit yourself up tall or lay yourself out long or stand yourself upright and breathe, can feel belly breathing. It's a way to relax. Now I'm going to arise a specific way. If you've never come with me on this journey, I invite you to. If you ever have a back issue, I would I will ask you to try to use this together. Whatever way you can, using your arms and legs to roll yourself over onto your belly. I need a little more room there. There we go. When you get there, by the way, if you have a frozen shoulder, this moment is a challenge. Okay. When you get there, go ahead and just tuck your arms right in next to your chest. Feel your feet flat on the floor, your neck relaxed. Now, engage your pelvic tilt. Press your pubic bone as if it's going into the floor. If you're very lean, be cautious not to press so hard that your bone hits the mat too hard. If you've got a lot of softness, rearrange your softness. Pelvic tilt, very important. With your pelvic tilt engaged, so your back is going to stay flat. Come up onto your elbows. Push. See the flat back? Till you're on elbows and knees with a beautiful flat back. And walk your knees in. And find yourself into your table. I'm going to sit down for our final easy seat, easy pose, or V-sit. That way of getting up gives you full control of your spine so you don't actually accidentally with momentum do some move that might make it unhappy. Want a butterfly? Want an easy seat? Should you back up against the wall? About a third of the people in class today might want to do that. You want your V sit? Okay, the easy seat is really, really hard for me, so I'm trying to do it more often. <sighs> Spine tall, neck relaxed. Reach your arms towards your body, whether you're laying down, sitting down. Say thank you to your body for all that it does for you. Hand over heart center. Thank whoever, whatever you believe in. Up, stretch your hands and pat yourself on the back or the chest, or the top of the head, and appreciate, say thank you to yourself. And then finally, arms outstretched, as if gathering all good things to you. Do you want a barely 
bent wrist or very bent wrist over heart center. Know that the light in me sees and honors the light in you. Namaste. Just breathe and exhale. Round down. You are all up nice and round over. Namaste turns out is actually a greeting. So this is how we greet the rest of our day. You can stay right there. You can chill. I'm just getting up so I can turn off the recording. And as always, I thank you. Whether you're here on Saturday mornings, 10 o'clock Eastern time on Zoom, my phone number's right below. Go ahead and text me. I'll send you an invite. Or whether you are on YouTube, I really appreciate you. You're good for me, I hope. I'm good for you. All right, now I'm going to figure out how to turn off the recording. Oh, I got it. Bye, guys. And if you're in class, stay for tea.